Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. In this presentation, we will discuss professional standards in child nutrition programs, as well as wellness policy and wellness programs. So a little bit of background information on professional standards. The regulations at 7 CFR 210.30 and 235.11 G establish professional standards for employees who manage and operate the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program. The regulations establish minimum hiring standards for new state and local directors of school nutrition programs and annual continuing education and training requirements for state directors and all local school nutrition personnel. The regulations also establish hiring and training standards for state directors of distributing agencies. Directors hired before July 1, 2015 are exempt from the hiring standards and are grandfathered in based on their existing positions. The training and hiring professional standards have a simple goal. They help ensure the success of the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program. The standards assist state agencies and school food authorities in recruiting, hiring, training, and retain, retaining qualified school nutrition staff. They help to enhance the image of school nutrition professionals and their influence in the community, and also help to build skills and empower staff to lead and efficiently operate school nutrition programs. Throughout the rest of this presentation, we will discuss the two categories of requirements for professional standards in child nutrition programs. First, they include minimum hiring requirements, and second, they include continuing education requirements. First, we will discuss applicable hiring requirements. State agency directors of school nutrition programs and state agency directors of distributing agencies in the positions prior to July 1, 2015, as well as SFA directors of the school nutrition program in their positions prior to July 1, 2015, may continue to serve in their existing positions without having to meet the hiring standards. Directors hired on or after July 1, 2015 must meet the hiring standards included in the regulations. Directors hired on or after April 30, 2019 may use the flexibilities provided by the hiring flexibility under professional standards rule. Depending on a candidate's qualifications, the hiring standards for CNP directors require a degree or equivalent education experience with an academic major or concentration in food and nutrition, food service management, dietetics, family and consumer sciences, nutrition education, culinary arts, business, or a related field. A related field refers to other college majors that would provide an applicant specific knowledge and skills that are relevant for a school nutrition program director. Possible majors would include, but are not limited to, food science, community nutrition and marketing, and hospitality management. Please note that colleges and universities may use different names for similar majors. For example, a major may be called food service management at one university and hospitality management at another. For the purpose of hiring standards, the term equivalent educational experience refers to college credits completed by an individual who does not possess a bachelor's or an associate's degree. For example, a new director of a school nutrition program in an LEA with an enrollment of 2,499 students or fewer could have at least 60 college credits, which is generally the number of credits required by a college or university to confer an associate's degree. In another example, a new director in an LEA with enrollment of 10,000 students or more could have at least 120 college credits, which is generally the number of credits required for a bachelor's degree. An SFA must keep documents such as college records that show the equivalent education experience supports the hiring decision. The state agency has the flexibility to determine if other substantial education 
such as an extensive training program in school nutrition topics from a professional association with a credentialing and certification program would qualify as equivalent educational experience. For LEAs with an enrollment of 2,499 or fewer students, the final rule requires relevant food service experience rather than school nutrition program experience. Typically, the phrase relevant food service experience refers to work in the food service industry, including but not limited to hospitals, healthcare facilities, nursing homes, restaurants, cafeterias, free meal centers, and university dining services. Examples of skills employees would obtain in the food service industry include food handling and preparation, food ordering, nutrition education, financial management, and customer service. Typically, the phrase relevant school nutrition program experience refers to previous work experience in the national school lunch and school breakfast programs and or experience in other child nutrition programs, such as the top child and adult care food program and or the summer food service program. If the latter experience is gained from working in a school, the intent of the professional standards regulation is to ensure that new school nutrition program directors have the knowledge and skills to manage the program as required. The final rule also provides state agency with discretion to consider documented volunteer unpaid work as relevant experience for a new school nutrition program director in an LEA with 2,499 or less students. Please note that these hiring flexibilities apply to directors hired on or after April 30th, 2019, and they are implemented to address hiring challenges faced by small LEAs. We often find that SFAs are not sure who is considered to be their child nutrition director. Generally speaking, the individual who plans, administers, implements, monitors, and evaluates all district-wide aspects of the school nutrition program is considered the CNP director. If SFA, if SFA responsibilities are divided into several positions, only the person hired to perform the majority of the nutrition duties must meet the hiring standards. Next, we will discuss the training requirements. Professional standards training requirements established annual training requirements for new state directors of school nutrition programs, new state directors of distributing agencies, existing state directors of school nutrition programs, and our state, state directors of distributing agencies for new and existing SFA directors and all other SFA managers and staff. Please remember that those uh, considered new directors are those hired on or after July 1st, 2015. Directors are required to complete 12 training hours per year. Managers are required to complete 10 hours Full-time staff are required to complete six hours, and employees who work less than 20 hours per week are required to complete four hours of training each year. Mid-year hires in all categories, including those hired or those hired January 1st or later, are required to complete half the training requirements for their job type. Therefore, directors need six, managers need five, full-time staff need three, and part-time staff need two hours of training. The annual requirements apply to the 12 months between July 1st and June 30th, that is how, as that is how USDA defines the school year. Civil rights training must be completed annually for all child nutrition program staff. When offer versus serve is utilized within an SFA or at a school, OVS training is also required annually. Food safety is a critical aspect of the food service operation that affects all students. Eight hours of food service, food safety training every five years is required for program directors. However, having additional staff trained in food safety is always encouraged. The USDA FNS Office of Food Safety offers food safety training and other resources related to food safe handling, safe food handling at, on the USDA website. 
Serve Safe and the Institute of Child Nutrition's Food Safety in Schools are popular ways that food service directors receive and maintain this training. So what qualifies as training? Allowable training should focus on the day-to-day -day management and operation of the school nutrition programs. Only training that fosters proper administration and operation of the school nutrition programs counts toward the training standards. As a guide, when planning training, use the list of key training areas and topics that are available on the USDA website. Back to school training on general topics such as security procedures and building operations do not count toward the annual training standards. Training must be job specific and intended to help employees perform their duties well. Training needs are best assessed by an employee in consultation with their manager, the SFA director, or the state agency. Employees should always seek guidance from a supervisor before taking a specific training course to meet the professional standards requirements. Again, back to school trainings that are not CNP specific do not count toward the annual training hours required of CNP staff. The school nutrition program director determines the training standards for the employees based on their job duties in the school nutrition program, regardless of funds used to support a specific position. The definitions in the regulation for school nutrition program director, manager, and staff do not specify that these positions must be fully or partially supported by food service funds. Generally, the employee training is also an allowable use of an SFA's school food service funds. However, food service funds or state administrative expense funds must not be used to pay for the cost of college credits incurred by an individual to meet the hiring standards. State agencies and SFAs are encouraged to access the free or low cost training resources listed online on the USDA website under the professional standards section. Professional standards vary by three job categories, directors, managers, and staff. Program staff would generally include individuals such as cooks, cashiers, and others who are involved in the preparation and service of school meals. Individuals who are involved in other program operations, such as eligibility determinations and meal counting and claiming, and support staff who may have an impact on the safety of school meals. However, a person who provides support to, but is not specifically involved in the operation of school nutrition program, such as the cleaning custodian, is not required to meet the training standards, even if they are paid using the nonprofit food service account funds. The program director or manager must examine the job duties of program staff to determine what job specific training they need to perform their jobs effectively and in compliance with program regulations. Please refer to the Guide to Professional Standards for School Nutrition Programs for examples of different job categories and how to meet training needs by category. Office staff members who process free and reduced price meal applications or provide other support for the school nutrition program for a short period of time during the school year are not required to meet the annual training standards. However, these individuals should receive adequate training specific to the task they will perform. This situation is different from office staff working on program activities 20 hours or more per week throughout the school year. In that situation, staff must complete six hours of annual training Staff working less than 20 hours per week must complete four hours of annual training. If you have substitute, temporary, or acting staff, and you have questions about how training standards will apply to them, please contact the state agency. Training standards in the CNP director. Who has to meet training standards for the program director when the school nutrition manager or other staff member carrying out the duties of the director, but another individual holds the title of program director. Job duties and job titles may differ from district to district. If the school nutrition program director duties are performed by the program manager, 
then both the director and the manager would be responsible for meeting the training standards for the program directors. SFA should discuss unique situations with the state agency to determine the appropriate course of action. So please note that for both the hiring and training standards, those without a director title may be required to meet higher standards, such as those for directors, based on their roles and responsibilities within the program. The SFA director must ensure that food service management company employees providing service for the school nutrition programs have the required annual training. Therefore, the SFA must require the FSMC to provide documentation showing the training hours and topics completed by the employees. Contracts that do not include this language will need to be amended to include additional language to reflect compliance with professional standards requirements. The SFA director may work with the FSMC to identify appropriate training resources, such as those listed at the professional standards website. So what are your record keeping requirements? The SFA is responsible for documenting all staff training. Compliance with training requirements will be evaluated during the administrative review. Training trackers must include the employee name and position, for example, director, program staff, et cetera, the key area, key topic and training subject and the completion date and length of the training. The SFA must maintain supporting documentation this includes sign-in sheets, agendas, and training materials. And the SFA must also maintain training records for three years plus at the current year. We are often asked if excess training hours may be applied over multiple school years. The answer to that is yes. As stated in the regulation at 210.30E, at the discretion of the state agency, excess annual training hours may be applied to the school year directly preceding or directly following the date of the training. This is intended to help provide flexibility while ensuring that SFA employees receive a reasonable amount of training each school year. Documentation to show completion of training must be available to the state agency for review. On this slide, you can see a screenshot of and a link to USDA's Professional Standards Training Tracker Tool. This tool allows employees to be organized under a manager or director. USDA's Professional Standards Training Tracker Tool 2.0 may be used to document the annual training hours. This free online tool provides great features, such as allowing a manager to set up an employee roster and enter and edit training records for multiple employees all at once. It helps to auto-populate school contact information to easily set up profiles. It helps to efficiently run reports and provides a database of trainings to auto-populate training information. The tool provides reminder alerts and email notification of how many training hours have been completed and how many hours remain to be completed to fulfill the annual training requirement. A certificate of completion for the manager and all staff can be saved, emailed, and are printed once the annual requirement is met. The second option for a training tracker tool is the one available on the Louisiana Fit Kids website. The LDOE Division of Nutrition Support has partnered with the Pennington Biomedical Research Center, who has developed an alternate tool for SFAs to use to document and manage training hours. One benefit of the Louisiana Fit Kids Tracker is that it is very simple to add trainings held at PBRC, and as they are all entered in, as they are all entered into a database once the training has been completed. Alternative training tracking tools, such as the one from Louisiana Fit Kids, and are those developed by SFAs to keep track of and print reports of training hours must include at a minimum the required fields listed in the USDA Professional Standards Training Tracking Tool 2.0. These fields would include items such as the employee information, training hours completed, and the key areas, training topics, and learning objectives as listed in the Professional Standards Learning Objectives and Topics with Codes. The Professional Standards Needs Codes are broken into four key areas. 
Key area one are the 1000 level codes are related to nutrition. Key area two or the 2000 area codes are related to program operations. Key area three or the 3000 level codes are related to administration. And key area four or the 4000 level codes are related to communications and marketing. So what may be needed for an administrative review? Professional standards tracking and documentation has been a frequent finding on administrative reviews. Here is a list of items that you will need to have for the administrative review. First, you will need to provide a current list of all school nutrition personnel, as well as individual documentation showing the name of the staff person, the date they were hired, their title and position, a brief list of core duties and responsibilities, their employment status, including the average number of hours per week for part-time employees, and the professional standards employee category or position, for example, nutrition program director, manager, or staff. This will be in addition to the training tracking tool you are using to show training hours for each employee. Here are some additional resources for for professional standards requirements. Now we, move, we will move on to the second portion of the presentation and discuss the local wellness policy requirements. What is a local wellness policy? Wellness is an active process through which people become aware of and make choices toward a more successful existence. The local school wellness policy is a written document that guides a local education, local educational agency or LEA efforts to establish a school environment that prov promotes students' health, well-being, and ability to learn. The wellness policy must include a description of public involvement, public updates, leadership, and an evaluation plan. So a little bit of legislative background on how the wellness policy came to be. In 2004, child nutrition and WIC reauthor the 2004 Child Nutrition and WIC Reauthorization Act mandated that each educational agency receiving funds for child nutrition programs, for example, the National School Lunch or School Breakfast Program, from the United States Department of Agriculture, establish a local wellness policy. In 2010, the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act strengthened the requirements for the local school wellness policies and put more emphasis on policy implementation, periodic review, and updates. By addressing the poor nutritional habits and sedentary lifestyles of young people, effective school wellness policies can make the connection between health and academic success. School wellness policies promote academic success in the classroom by helping children become fit, healthy, and ready to learn. These policies can also help prevent childhood obesity as well as serious diseases such as type 2 diabetes. After the USDA finalized the regulations in July of 2016, LEAs were required to develop a revised local wellness policy. Then in June of 2017, LEAs were required to be in compliance with the requirements of the final rule. Each educational agency's wellness policy must meet the following minimum requirements. Number one, it must include goals for nutrition education, physical activity, and other school-based activities that are designed to promote student wellness. Number two, it must include nutrition guidelines for all food available during the school day with the goals of promoting student health and reducing childhood obesity. Number three, it must provide assurances that, gu that guidelines for reimbursable school meals are not less restrictive than the regulations issued by the USDA. Number four, it must allow parents, students, school administrators, child nutrition staff, school board members, and the public to be involved in developing and implementing the wellness policy. And number five, it must include ways of measuring the effectiveness of the wellness policies including the designation of one or more persons at each school with the responsibility for the wellness policy. Due to the childhood obesity epidemic and federal regulations, student health and wellness has become a concern of schools nationwide. 
An LEA must establish a wellness policy leader to ensure each school complies with the policy. With the policy. Consequently, school nutrition directors are often asked to lead the school nutrition wellness teams. As a school wellness team leader, you have a very important role in fostering an environment that is conducive to student learning. In addition to a wellness policy leader, it is encouraged to have pu the public involvement in creating the local wellness policy for your LEA. Some groups that may be asked to participate in the development, implementation, review, and updates of your wellness policy include parents, students, school food authority representatives, PE teachers, school health professionals, school board members, school administrators, and members of the general public. The wellness policy must include specific and measurable goals for nutrition promotion, nutrition education, physical activity, and other school-based activities that promote wellness. Developing a specific and measurable goal will let you know if you, if and how you are meeting your policy objectives. Two or more measurable goals are required for each area of the wellness policy. LEAs must review and consider evidence-based strategies when determining their goals for nutrition education, nutrition promotion, physical activity, and other school-based activities. Evidence-based strategies are those that have been evaluated, studied, and peer-reviewed. LEAs must review and consider evidence-based strategies when determining these goals. Examples of evidence-based strategies include the smarter lunchroom techniques. These techniques include using creative names for fruits and vegetables, training staff to encourage students to select fruits and vegetables, placing unflavored milk in front of other milk choices, and bundling grab-and-go meals that include fruit and vegetable items. Other evidence-based strategies include the coordinated approach to child health and SPARK. By clicking on the links in the handouts here, you will be able to access all of this information. So next let's, next, let's discuss the local wellness policy requirements. Wellness, policy, wellness policy requirements include a nutrition education component. This gives students the knowledge, skills, and confidence to make healthy eating habits. Education may include teaching students about healthy meal choices, reading nutrition facts labels, identifying sources of added sugars and saturated fats. These can be accompanied by activities such as integrating nutrition into health education classes and integrating nutrition into core subjects. The next wellness policy requirement is nutrition promotion. It is important to create a food environment that encourages healthy choices and participation in school meals. Activity ideas could include providing wellness newsletters to families with information designed to encourage families to promote healthy food consumption at home, posting nutrition, nutrition, posting nutrition signage around the school, and offering contests, surveys, and taste testing around the school. It is important for kids to be physically active at school. The CDC recommends that children and adolescents receive 60 minutes or more each day of physical activity. Physical activity in schools can include PE, school sports, recess, activity breakfasts, or school events, such as walks or runs. Other school-based wellness activities shouldn't be incorporated into the schools and not just the cafeteria. Healthy learning opportunities could include staff wellness trainings to inspire them to serve as role models, family health and nutrition classes or events, and school gardens. The wellness policy must include standards and nutrition guidelines for all foods and beverages sold to students on the school campus during the school day and for both school meals and snacks. At a minimum, these items must meet school meal nutrition standards and smart snack requirements. The term school campus means any location on the school campus that are accessible to students and the term school day means midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the school day. 
The wellness policy must include standards for all foods and beverages provided, but not sold to students during the school day. For example, things served at birthday parties or in classroom parties. Decision on this policy should be made at the local school level. The wellness policy must include a district's policy for food and beverages marketing on the school campus during the school day. Only food and beverage items that meet smart snack standards may be advertised. Marketing includes oral, written, or graphic statements made for the purpose of promoting the sale of food or beverage products. Examples include posters, flyers, vending machines, beverage cups, coolers, or trash cans. The wellness policy does not dictate food and beverages that can be marketed after the end of the school day, like at sporting events. LEAs must conduct an assessment of the local wellness policy at least once every three years, and the result of the assessment should be made public. The first triennial assessment was due on June 30th, 2020. The assessment must include the extent to which the schools are in compliance with the local wellness policy and a description of the progress made in attaining the goals of the wellness policy. USDA provided a waiver allowing SFAs to complete their triennial local wellness policy assessment by June 30th, 2023. SFAs were to notify the state agency that they wish to opt into the new deadline by June 30th, 2022. Please refer to memo SFS 22-145 for more information. LEAs must update or modify the local school wellness policy as appropriate. The LEA must make the wellness policy and any updates to the policy available to the public each year. The LEA must also make the triennial assessment results and progress toward meeting goals outlined in the policy available to the public. Best practice is to share via the school's website, social media, newsletters, and by providing copies at back to school events. Wellness policy documentation must be maintained for three years plus the current year. This documentation includes the written local wellness policy, documentation de demonstrating compliance with community involvement, documentation of the triennial assessment, and documentation that demonstrates compliance with the public notification. The LEA should have the following records available during an administrative review. Number one, a copy of the district's current wellness policy. Number two, documentation of the di district's distri distribution of the policy and assessment to the public. Number three, the most recent triennial assessment and number four, documentation of policy review and updates, including who was involved and how the public was notified of their option for involvement. Here is a list of wellness resources that are available. Any questions? I don't see any. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact any one of us at the Department um, of Education's Division Nutrition Support at our um, main phone line, or you can email us at childnutritionprograms at la.gov. Thank you.